Hi, for a few years ago, I bought this kitchen or egg timer, as people are calling it. And I recently visited the same store and saw exactly the same one on the shelves. And I thought it would be nice to control the LCDs and buttons on these things for my own projects because they are just around 2 euros. They are very simple devices and maybe it's the reason for their success. After all, this design survived the market all these years. It has one magnet on the back and there is also a stand thingy over here. So you can put it on your desk or put it on the kitchen somewhere while cooking your stuff. These are the only things that you would want from a kitchen timer I guess. This is exactly the same reason why I wanted to use these things. Most of the time you just want 4 digits and some buttons and nice casing. Of course you can go and buy this kind of LCDs. They are also working great. They have 2 lines and 16 characters. But still you need to design a case for them. They are totally fine. But if you use this type of LCDs, it kinda attracts unnecessary attention. And the characters are not as big as the ones that you have on these kitchen timers. And if you want 4 digits, for example, these LEDs are also an alternative but they draw more power than the LCDs and maybe it's not just what you want. And if you want to get one of those, you don't really need to wait for it. You can just go to the store and grab one just for two dollars or something. Then you have a nice device with big digits and it already has nice casing for it. To reverse engineer the LCD, first of course we need to access to LCD and the electronics. On this particular one, first I need to remove this membrane thingy and after this, I can access the screws over here. Then you can remove the front panel of these kitchen timers. After this, you can access all the parts. This is the LCD screen that I am interested in. They are just bare LCDs and they don't really have any controller on them. So you have to control them manually. This is a way to produce them very cheaply. And here is your membrane buttons. And this is the main PCB that it has. If you see a cheap electronic device with an LCD, like this one, there is a very high chance that it has this kind of LCD. It won't have a driver on it, just two glasses stacked together with LCD fluid in between. On the contact points, there is a zebra strip where you send your signals from your microcontroller. The pads on the PCB is for signal waves, which is created by a microcontroller to drive the LCD. This black blob is a microcontroller with an LCD driver and it is the way to make them as cheap as possible. If you want to reprogram these blobs, it won't be that easy. Because these microcontrollers most of the time are just one time programmable. Or even possibly they are not even programmable at all because they are ASICs, which is designed that way. However, even if it was possible, they don't really have any memory on them so you won't be able to do something cool with this. Another component that it has is the crystal, which is used for the correct timing. And there is a buzzer, which creates these beeping sounds. And that's all about it. I can't even think of making this thing even cheaper than this. What I am going to do is, I will just green this black blob off and will get rid of this blob. So it won't do anything with the PCB. And I will solder some wires here. That way I would like to find the pinout for this LCD. To determine the common pins and also the pins which controls the segments. There might be other methods for determining the pinouts of this. But I couldn't think of anything easier than this. Just give me a moment please. Okay, it is done. What I did here is, I scrapped the blob on this thing. So it won't interfere with the signals. Because I want to control the pins without interference. Then I soldered a cable for each pad. I am doing all of this just for finding the pinout of these things. If you can think of any other simpler method, please do so, because this is a little bit time consuming. After that I installed the PCB back on the front panel with the same screws. I inserted all of the cables to a breadboard. Also I made a simple voltage divider circuitry here with the resistors, just to provide the same voltage which LCD uses. LCDs are driven with the AC voltage instead of the DC. First, I would like to show you what happens if you provide DC voltage directly to the LCD segments. What happens is, the segments start to show up something, and after a while, they fade away. 
Some of them are still shown something, but after a while they will also fade away. It will reduce the lifetime of your LCD greatly, and eventually it will damage it. Also, you don't want to see fading away segments. Previously I gave 5 volts, and let me show you if I reduce the voltage, let's say, to 3 voltage, which Arduino Uno can also do. Only difference here is the segments are fading away faster than the 5 volts. To simulate the AC voltage with an Arduino, I made this simple code. It's just switching the pin 8 and 9 accordingly with the given frequency. Depending on your LCD type, you might need to change your frequency. And then I connected pin 8 and 9 to Arduino. It is really a simple sketch and it will switch back and forth pin 8 and 9 with the given frequency. So more or less like simulating the AC voltage. If I start the Arduino, you see that more than 1 pins are showing up. That's because Arduino is working on 5 volts and the LCD needs lower voltage. But that's not what we want. We want to be able to see only one single segment at a time. That's why I have these resistors here. It's nothing fancy, I'm just using them as a voltage divider. And I will play with them until I see only one single segment at a time. And if you want a tip to determine which voltage that your LCD panel is using, just take a look at the original PCB that you have and see what's the working voltage. This one is using only one AAA battery, which provides only one and half volt. So you should set up your voltage dividers roughly more or less equal to one and half voltage. The most important pins are the common pins. Basically it is just a pin which controls more than one segment. And if you probe more than two common pins at the same time, you won't see any segments. Since we are simulating AC voltage, you don't need to mind the polarity of the pins. So if you catch a single segment like this, that means you found a common and also a segment pin. At this point, it helps to have a paper nearby so you can record your findings. Still, sometimes I can see two pins are showing up at the same time because I am not providing the correct bias. In this case, it is safe to assume that the one which has more contrast is the correct pin. So after spending like 5 minutes, I was able to find the common pins on my LCD. So in this one, first and the second pins are the common one. Also this is one way to drive the LCDs. You can directly use the Arduino Uno pins by providing high and low voltages and alternating them in between and it's called direct driving the LCD. In some cases, it is indeed used, however it's not the most efficient way to drive an LCD, especially if it has more than one digit, because it makes your code very complicated and your MCU will just using all its processing power just to drive the LCD. The power consumption will be high and you won't have time to do something else in between. So in this LCD I was able to find the common pins on the PCB, it is the plus two pins and also first two pins. Rest of the pins are used to control the LCD segments. After finding out the common pins, next step is finding out the map of the LCD. For this, I draw a table on another paper where I put the common pins on the left and segment pins on top. And on here, I note down which pin is controlling which segment. You might assume that each common is controlling one digit, but it's not the case. They are multiplexing the pins to draw out the segments. But it's not really complicated to handle it with the code. Another good option to drive an LCD is finding a microcontroller which has the LCD functionality built in and you can drive the LCD with this and you can do other stuff with the microcontroller like reading a sensor or something and I sorted this out from Mouser with the price and this is just a microcontroller which does exactly that it has four common pins, it supports four common pins and also on top of that it has enough segments but one issue with these things is, if you write your code just for this microcontroller, you cannot transfer your code to another platform. 
For example, if you want to use another microcontroller, then you need to rewrite your code because you are dependent on this microcontroller. That's why I don't want to use a microcontroller which has an LCD peripheral built-in. And another option is finding another chip which only exists to drive an LCD. And you can type in an LCD driver in any of the, let's say, distributors. You need to find a driver which can support your application. And these ones doesn't work because we have more than seven segments and the least one is 18 segments, for example. And they are around like one and a half euros. And I think it's a little bit pricey just for driving the LCD. Of course, this will do your job just fine, but I want to use something which is as cheap as possible. And to do that, I also went to LCSC Electronics, which is like equivalent to the mouser.com. They usually sell products from China. And also I searched for LCD driver and sorted out from the price point and also only I'm showing the ones which is in the stock. There are also a few options here, like it starts from 0.16 euros, like 12 cents. While scrolling down, I saw this one, it is TM1621D and the price is okay, quite cheap and also it supports more segment than the previous ones. I decided to go with this one and use another microcontroller with it, like for example a tiny. And if you take a look at the prices, for example, a tiny is here. They are around like 65 cents and if you sum up those, it will be cheaper than buying this PIX16 LF series. And also, if you are penny pitching, you can even find cheaper deals than this one, for example, on AliExpress, like this one. And the only issue with this is the datasheet is only Chinese, but it's not as something that would prevent you from using these devices. I go to Google Translate and it can also translate the documents and, well, it made a really decent job for translating all these Chinese documents to English. And you can see all the details to use these chips. So I opened the KiCad and drew a schematics out of it using this TM1621D LCD driver. And instead of just being depending on one microcontroller, you can either use a tiny 13A, for example, drawing something simpler on the LCD, or ESP12E module to, let's say, communicate something over the Wi-Fi or connecting it to Home Assistant or something. I designed a PCB to be able to use these things. And only thing you need to be careful here is if you would like to use it, for example, just for a tiny, you need to solder zero ohm resistor you can make let's say a bridge out of these pads or you can just solder a cable or something so you can use it for a tiny and if you would like to use it for esp 12 e module you can just skip soldering this thing and solder the esp module directly on the pcb and also i made this contact pads and that way you will be able to use it for the buttons that the casing already has. PCBs are arrived and I paid two dollars for five of them. I used SMD components here and you might be a little bit scared of using them. But once you get used to soldering SMD components, you will never want to go back to true hole components. Just give me a second. This is the one that I sold one a tiny over here and this potentiometer used for adjusting the contrast of the LCD. On the other side of the PCB, I tried to match exact footprint of the LCD and I used the same buzzer from the original PCB. Since I am using a tiny on this board, I soldered a small cable to bridge between those two pads and also soldered the programming header. If you prefer, you can also solder ESP12E module on the same PCB and they are sharing the same programming header. 
so you can solder the one depending on your application. This one is useful for Wi-Fi applications. And I did not populate the zero ohm resistor for the ESP. And you can use the contact pads to use for the buttons. You can also use the same battery compartment for providing power to the PCB. But the original one is designed for using standard AAA batteries, which only provides 1.5 volts and the circuitry uses 3.3 voltages. So you can just use one of these lithium ion batteries, which fits right exactly on this spot. Even though you won't be able to use it for a long time for the ESP because it draws so much power for the Wi-Fi module, but it's totally usable for a tiny. This is the one with the tiny in it. And I wrote a simple sketch to just show the numbers here. You need to define correct pinouts, of course. They are right here. And this sketch is just showing the numbers. I am using USB ASP to program the Tiny, but of course you can program a Tiny with using your Arduino Uno board as well. If you want that, just look for the internet. There are really nice tutorials on it. The simple sketch is first showing up all the digits here, and after that it will start counting. Of course you can do much more, it just depends on your imagination. But apart from just showing the numbers, I wanted to print out some letters on it as well. Because you know, it might be useful. But the Tiny has really small memory in it. And this is the one with the ESP module on it. I'm using a USB to TTL converter by the way. But of course you can use an Arduino board to program it as well. And in this sketch I wanted to show up the letters on the screen. Since the digits have only 7 segments, it's not possible to show up all the letters. But still we can show most of the letters. And I wrote a function to print out the digits on the screen. So you can print out the possible letter combinations on the LCD. To upload the code, you need to press both two buttons like I am showing here. And you will enter the bootloader. Just the way you usually do it on Node MC or other breakout boards. Then the code will be uploaded. Of course, since it has ESP microcontroller on it, you can program it to do over-the-air updates as well. But for the sake of demonstration, I am just uploading it as usual way. And after uploading the code, you can just press the reset button, which is the right button here. And the program will start. Of course, in these examples, again, I am just demonstrating how it is showing up to all the segments. And afterwards, the main code will start. I cannot separately control second and minute segments here because they are connected to each other physically. But apart from that, you can control each segment individually. And the best way to use these screens is you just print out whatever you want to do and you can put the ESP to deep sleep. And unless you want to turn off the LCD, the screen will stay on. And this is the most power efficient way to do it. By the way, I didn't really optimize the code. For example, for now, the print function doesn't work on the iTiny because of the memory limitations, but it will give you a nice starting point. Of course, as always, I am providing all the codes which I have used in the video and also all the design files down in the description. So you can use this type of LCDs for your own projects or you can use it to confuse your partners in the kitchen. Of course, it's all up to you. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you next time.